you know, you're going to have to give Jesus a, a louder clap than that now. Come on. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, Green Pastors. Good morning. This, this church is alive and kicking, isn't it? Uh, she's alive and kicking, and I'm so thankful for that. You know, I, see, today I really want to give the devil a good dig in the day. I don't know about you, but I do. I, you know, <clears throat> I want to thank you for your uh, love and for your kindness towards us over these last six months. You've been uh, a wonderful church, a wonderful church. I don't believe that there's any other church would have survived what we have been through in the last couple of years. And so the Lord bless you. And I want to thank you for your loyalty and your prayers for us. I, I've, I've felt your prayers. And boy, did I realize um, if ever uh, we preached on encouragement and surrounding yourself with people who speak into your life in, in the fiery days and the difficult days, then I've realized it now. And so don't do life alone. Get yourself into some kind of life group because you're going to need it someday. Yeah, We are all going to go through some crushing places in life. Come on, we are. And it's best to do that not on your own. And so I want to thank uh, the, uh, the spiritual board, Pastor Ken especially, Pastor Roy and Pastor Brian for their support and God's uh, God's care. It was he nursed me for all those weeks and kept me from throwing in the towel because I was ready for it. I was huffing. Ever huff? Anybody ever huff with God? Yeah, well, I was huffing, and and so <clears throat> it's good to have people around you. I want to thank uh, my pastor, Pastor McConnell, who's sadly, uh, he's passed away. He's, he's standing up in the clouds of glory today, along with that group of witnesses there, looking down on us and shouting at us and telling us, keep going. And you know, he so prayed for us. He so wanted to be preaching on this, in this place, you know. Uh, and and but it wasn't to be. And of course, Pastor Michael, who <clears throat> oh boy, he stuck closer than a brother through all of that, and kept us laughing when we had nothing to laugh about. Uh, and so it's important to keep laughter in your life. And of course, this definitely not last. But but Green Pastors, let's give a real encouragement and a thanks to Pastor Jackie and to Mark for carrying this place. Come on for carrying the, the mantle of this place. No, nobody really knows the way of it. They don't really understand it. I mean, how can you? Uh, and so we, and we are thankful for your, your strength and your courage in, in the days. And let's not forget the lead team. Let's not forget your exec team. Let's not forget the board. And... <clears throat> The good thing is that, you know, we, we survived things that others wouldn't. And that means our structure is good and our order is good because we're going to need it in the days that lie ahead. Okay, these, we're going to enter in the difficult days. And not, not days to be worried about, but days to be ready for and prepared for because then we can walk through it and and keep worshiping God in the middle of it. I, and then I, I want to thank my two sons, Adam and Jack, uh, and we, Stace. You know, I, I'm sorry that you had to walk that with us, uh, but you know, your dad's proud of you, and I love you, uh, and I'm, I, just, I just do. And I'm a grander now. I don't like to tell anybody that, but I'm a grander now. That's how old I am, and... And, and there's, a, there's a boy down there called Mo. I, I just want to mention him. I tell you why. Because he came in my house one day. And he said to me, Pastor, if you don't want to go to church, I'll come, you can come and sit beside me. I said, 
Ich sag mal. And then last but not least, to my lovely wife, to Liam, she kept me going. She was a rock to me, and she believed in me when I didn't believe in me. And so I want to give her a wee bunch of flowers this morning. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm going to promise tonight. I'm going to promise tonight. I'm just, I'm going to promise. This is a great Sunday. It's just a great Sunday. Yeah. Guys, you need to learn. You need to learn, you know, you need to learn. Come on, let's, let's pray. Let's pray together. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be, lest we forget Gethsemane. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to lead this great house. We believe, God, that you have a, a, a purpose, a special place for us, that this must be the place, that you're going to do something lovely in the last of the last days. Your spirit is here this morning, and he's longing to do a work in each of us. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll move from sea to sea and from heart to heart and may your name be glorified. May people crown you today king over their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, over these next uh, couple of weeks, uh, we're going to give you the heads up. Uh, today's heads up is about don't lose your head. And then next week, we're going to preach on a wee subject called why do you need a head? And then on the last week, we're going to look ahead at where we're going as a church, okay? And so those the next three weeks uh, is where we're going to go. And I, I really uh, believe that this word that I'm giving you today is, is, is pivotable on a life journey with Jesus, okay? Uh, turn with me to Ephesians 6, verse 17. Okay, just one verse, uh, and it says there in Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then Colossians 3, verse 2 says this, set your mind, say mind, set your mind on things above and not on things above. On the earth. Why is the helmet of salvation so important? What is it about the helmet that Paul wants us to understand and relate to? Paul writes to the Ephesian church and tells them to put on the whole armor of God. You've heard that preached that many times. Yeah, Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because you're under attack. You're under attack. The Bible says we must not give place. We must not give territory. We must not give space or, or place or time to the devil in your life. Pastor, what, what is it that that really means? Well, it means don't give legal claim to Satan. Okay, D don't repeat what the lie he gives you. Don't get to a place where you give government to his lies. Satan is always seeking a way to give a foothold in your life, always. He has no good intentions towards you. We saw on, I don't know where you saw or not, about in America there where they had that concert and you had that guy inviting Satan to come down into the middle of it. Oh my goodness. 
those people have no idea what they're inviting into their life. Domination, manipulation, and control. That's, you don't get nothing from Satan for nothing. You'll pay for it. And pay for it sore. And so no matter how blessed you are, no matter how healthy you are, no matter how accomplished you are, somewhere and sometime, you're going to give place. You're going to give territory. You're going to give your head, uh, uh, your mind, a place where, for the enemy in your life. One wrong thought can torpedo a battleship. Just a wrong thought can torpedo a battleship. God says, I'm going to protect you. I, I can protect you and bless you. But you have to dress for this battle. But then you know that. You know that no dress, no win. No dress, no win. No protection if you don't put on the clothing that God has for you. With every blessing and promise, there is a battle. There is a battle with every promise and blessing. I would venture to say, the greater the blessing, the greater the fight. Come on. The greater the blessing, the greater the fight. Church, the enemy would not send this level of attrition against you and against this church if there was not that level of promise over us. Can I hear an amen? You see, you're going to know that. You've got to know why the battle was so hard and so difficult. No robber ever robs an empty house. If all is dark and all is fearful in your life and in your world, be encouraged today. There is something to be gained. Jesus has something to be gained at the end of that. So the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand Stand against the wiles of the devil. That, that's what is that? That's the tactics of the devil. The antics, the strategies, the schemes, the lies of the devil. Do you know he was a liar from the beginning? Right from the beginning, a liar. And, and there's no truth in him. It's, it's hard to believe somebody that there's no truth in. No truth. And Paul says, when you're dressed when you're dressed for the battle, then he says, having done all to stand, you're getting all dressed up and there's a purpose of getting dressed up. And your purpose of getting dressed up is that you don't faint. You don't faint, you, you don't run, but stand. And not give place. Don't give territory. Don't give a space in your head to the devil. Because God has given this church Things that, are, that we are yet to possess. And God says, in order to possess what I'm giving you, you're going to have to stand to receive it. No crumble, no faint, no quit. But to receive it, you're going to have to stand. Okay? We're going in a church, we're going in a dark days. We're, when the gross darkness covers the whole earth, guess what? God comes up. And rises up over us. And we start to shine in the light. Okay? That's, that's the promise of God for us. And so we have to stand. Now, now that's your will. That's your willpower. That's your decision. That you have to make. The strength is yours. It's your might. You stand in your might. And having done all to stand, he says, stand therefore. And so listen to me. The first stand is up to you. The first stand comes down to you. You have to do that. I have to do that. Stop asking God to make you stand. Stop asking God to make you stand if you're not prepared to stand for yourself. Because you see, we need to be have investment in the things of God. God wants us to be invested into what God has given you. And so he says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And then, he's so good, then he tells us how to stand. 
He tells us how to stand. He says, in all your standing, having girded yourself with this belt of truth. And so God equips us for the battle. And it's truth that's going to equip us for the battle. He comes down the page and on the bottom of the page he says, the helmet of salvation is so important. Put on the helmet of salvation. Now, if you want to know what that is, how important is it to protect your head? How important is it to protect your head? We're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, 5, and 6. It's going to come up on the screen, and we're going to read it. We're going to read it together. For the weapons, okay, for this battle of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, okay? Now, I know you, most of you have heard this before. I, like, this is not some, but, but listen. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought and the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Look at what we have to fight with. He says we're pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. The, the, the New King James, or the King James Version says casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against what? Against what? The, oh, come on. Come on. Against the knowledge of God. The things that are coming against you and were coming against me are coming against what you know about God. Okay? They're coming against what you know about God. You know that He heals. You know that He sets captives free. You know that. But the feelings come. And the disappointments come. And the symptoms come to convince you that you're not. The enemy comes with imaginations to convince you that you don't have what God has already released to you through the cross. That's why the Bible calls the attack imaginations. They're just imagination. It's in your imagination. Shadows and ghosts. Some of us are stressed and anxious and afraid of what if. Come on, where's all the ladies in the house? Come on, who, yeah. Who is, who is stressed over what if? Oh, if I, see if that there ever happened. Oh, we do. Oh, see if that, oh. Uh, and there's everybody, they're all laughing because we know that I'm right. What if? We, and, and you know what? We got stabbed by suppose. We got stabbed by suppose. We were wrestling in the bed with the ghosts of what if, and I heard and I felt. And that's what the fight is all about. And what I hear the Lord say to you guys today is, don't lose your head. Don't lose your Anybody from Belfast today? Anybody here from Belfast? There's one at the back, just one at the back. Well, I, I, was, I was thinking that if, if there had been anybody here, and there's not, that we would want to translate that, and I was going to get Pastor Darren up, okay, and he was going to say that in Belfast lingo, which is, don't lose the bop. <laughs> right? And he could have stood up with Freddie from now on, and he would have been standing here just translating everything that I was saying into Belfast. But since there's nobody here, we're not going to do that. Okay? So the Bible gives us the heads up on this and says, there is a helmet that protects your head. Salvation speaks to things above. It means setting your attention on the things above. Setting your attention on God things, heaven things, and not getting sucked down into the earth all the time of what's going on. 
The Bible tells us to set. That means concrete in. Fix it to your minds, our heads, on things above. And here's where I want to get to today. The head speaks of government. Okay? The head speaks of government. Most of us are living out our lives from a soul place and not a head place. We are so swallowed up by what the soul feels that we have smothered what the head thinks. Oh, come on. We have allowed it to smother what the head thinks. And most of us who are in a fight, hands up who've been in a fight right now. Just a few. Come on, in a fight. Yeah, in a fight. And most of us, when the feelings come, we are governed by our feelings and by the emotions of the situation. And we, are having a, and we start having a, a, a feelings experience in what is really a head fight. We're having a feelings experience in what is a head fight. You and I will never win a battle if you're having a soul experience in what is a head fight. The Bible calls those kinds of Christians soulish Christians. Those are Christians that are living out of their feelings and not out of what they know. Okay? But when you're hurting, I, like, I, w- I want to say to you that this isn't easy. Standing is not easy. It's not easy when your your world is falling down around you and things that you think God promised you didn't arrive and didn't come. It's not easy when a loved one dies. It's not easy when there's something happens to you that you think shouldn't happen. And, And then you have to work with the feelings, all those feelings of what it's like to be disappointed, to be hurt, to be sore, to, to, to have been rejected, to know what that, that's like. It's, it's so difficult to get those feelings closed down so that they don't start to run what your decisions are. So we start telling the world and we tell the enemy how we feel. And that has nothing to do with what we know about God. Yeah, we've been telling everybody about how we feel, but really what we have to hold on to is what we know about God. Let me ask you a question. What do you know about God? What do you know about God? How are you going to find out about God? That Bible is the only thing that's going to tell you about God. That's the only thing that you can base your decisions on because it's truth. If you want to know and find out what the truth is for your life, for your family, for your kids, you're going to find it in here. Okay? And so you can't fight with anything but the words you know. And if you don't know this, if you don't know this Bible, then you're going to struggle to win the battle. And so you'll be running around desperate and go, you know what, I can't, I'm going to lose my head. I'm losing my head. I'm losing my head. Why? You know what? Because you haven't been focused on what you know. We've been focused on how we feel. I want to give you the heads up. I believe God wants to give you the heads up today, church. I hear God say, never approach the devil with your feelings. Never approach the devil with your feelings. You need to approach the devil with the facts. Come on, the facts of God. The facts of the word of God. And it's a fight. Do you understand? It's a fight. It's a fight. Because the enemy wants to cut off your head and leave you just with your feelings. But God wants to nurse you back to life today with what you know about him. Come on, what do you know about God? What do you believe about his nature, his character, who he really is? Is he a good God? I had a fight over whether he was a good God. How could you be good and do that? I had a fight to win the battle over that. Real good decisions that move you and your life along are not coming out of your feelings. 
they are going to come out of your head. They're going to come out from what you know about God. You see, I have, I have worked with God for such a long time now that there's stuff that I know about him that's hard to get over. And it's hard for the devil to lie about it. Do you understand? Because I know. I know that I know that I know. Because I've been with him. I've read that thing back dozens of times, dozens and dozens of times. Because I know him. And so you're left. The devil has no place to go because you know. Oh, come on. Is there anybody in here today? You're supposed to be helping me today. This is the first day back. I'm nervous. <laughs> Real good decisions that move your life along are not coming out of your feelings. They're coming out of what you know. And, and here's what the Bible says. And the tr- if when you know the the truth. Oh, you know your Bible. When you know the truth, the truth sets you free. You can stand on that. Do you understand? That's the bit that you have to stand on. I don't know what's going on, and I don't know how I feel, and I don't feel too good, but I'll tell you what, I know this. You see, the Hollywood curse has descended upon the whole earth where everybody is going, Oh, I don't know, darling. I'm not in the mood. I, I really not sure. I, 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 I don't feel like it today. I really don't feel like g- going through this today. I, I can't take it. I can't. My head's fried. And, and it's fried. And, and, and I just can't take it. Just, oh, I can't take it, darling. I just can't. I just, I just, come back next week. And we huff. Hands up, we've huffed. Like, come on. <laughs> okay, not, not with your spouse. Hands up, you've huffed for God. Yeah. Because my feelings don't marry up with what I know. And then there's a fight going on as to who's going to win that fight. You see, every time you operate in your feeling, and c- you are canceling out opportunities to be blessed of the Lord because God can't bless lies. He cannot bless imaginations. Okay? He cannot bless wrong. He can bless right. He can bless truth. Obedience to what you know wins every time. Come on. Obedience to what you know wins every time. The Bible says in Romans 7, verse 25, and you're listening brilliant, it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. With the head, we serve the Lord. <clears throat> did you know the disciples did all those miracles without a Bible? They were writing it. They had to go off what they knew to be true of Jesus. That's how they did it. That's how they had to work. Because, and what they had done is they, Jesus was the word. And so they had hidden their words down in in their hearts and they were acting out of their word, out of the word. You see, Psalm 119 verse 11 says this, it comes up on the screen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. What a verse Man, you could, you could stand on that there. I, I, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might know. That's taking on the word you know and keeping it in your heart so that the devil cannot steal it from you. You've got to know. You've got to have heard it because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It has to leave out of the page at you and you're hearing and it becomes part of your knowing and knowing that you know that you know. Some of us, Almost stepped out of God's promise and his blessing for our life. Hmm. Some of us nearly stepped out of it. Because the Bible says you have to stand. You have to stand on your blessings to receive them. 
God says to Joshua, he says, Joshua, uh, uh, was every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I give it to you. You're going to stand on it. You're going to have to stand on your promise if you're going to receive it. No matter how you feel about it, and the enemy wants to knock you off and knock you down and kick you off what you know about God. The enemy with his thoughts and imaginations is pushing you back off the promise that you heard from Jesus. And it was rightfully yours. And it's because it's a head thing. And I'm giving you the heads up today of the fight. You're in a head fight. I said, you're in a head fight. Church, this is no time for us to lose our head. You're in a head button competition with Jimmy. You know what you know what I was like you're like a head button competition when it's not with Jimmy, it's with the enemy. What he's saying against the truth of what you're knowing is how the fight started in the garden. And it's how Jesus destroyed him in the wilderness. It is. That's how you're going to win this. That's how you're going to defeat him. What he's saying against the truth of your knowing. That's how you're going to defeat him in the hospital. Come on. That's how you're going to defeat him when you're scared and afraid. It is written. It is written. That's how it's going to work. And so a person who does not function out of their head is a person without government. Okay, we're going to talk about that now. Is a person without government. A person who moves according to their feelings is exempt from God's opportunity because you will forfeit your promise because of how you feel. One phone call can change how you feel. Oh, come on. One phone call can set your house on fire. And you've got to bring that house under control. You're going to have to bring it under to control. God, and here, this is a light bulb minute, okay? This is a, this is a light bulb minute. This is, this is one that I want you to remember. Write down, put it in your Bible. Okay, that's a light bulb moment. Okay, I'm going to give you a light bulb moment right now. It says, God did not promise me, and he did not promise you that your feelings would line up with his facts. Come on. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're clapping right now. Come on, I, I'm going to say that again. God did not promise me and you that your feelings would line up with his facts. Never, say never, never make a life decision from an emotional place. You need to know what's leading your decisions. The devil is not fighting you over your feelings. He's fighting you over your head. And God has given you the heads up today. And he's saying, don't lose your head. He's given you threats of disaster and images to set your head into panic mode. And the, and the internet and Facebook and, and all that stuff is just piling on. And someday you're going to have to sh- decide, you know what, I don't need that stuff. That's putting stuff in my head I can't cope with. This is no time to lose your head. And what we're going to fight with is it, it's written. Okay, it's written. You see, when we are hurting and our feelings are running riot, you have to stand on the word you know until you win the battle. And that could take months because you're hurting so much. Not one time in the wilderness when the devil was tempting Jesus, did you hear Jesus go, oh, I've been here 40 days. I'm starving. Devil, would you just not let me? Can I not just turn that wee stone into a wee piece of bread? Because the man's hungry. I mean, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm tired here. 
Like, have a piece of compassion. Have you no compassion? The devil has no compassion. Not only has he no truth, he has no compassion. Now, I want you to think of a person that has no compassion and doesn't tell one truthful thing. How hateful would that be? How hateful would they be? No compassion. Like none. Like you were bleeding and you're lying on the floor and the things are really sore and, and, you're, and you're gasping for air and he puts a boot in you. You need to understand your foe. You need to understand what's, what you're fighting in. Jesus did not approach his battle with the devil with feelings because the devil has no compassion. So whatever you do, church, wherever you are today, no matter how dark it is, no matter in, in how you feel today, here's a heads up from Jesus. This is no time to lose your head. Put on the helmet of salvation. Timmy, you want to come up? Put on the helmet of salvation. Do you know what that means? Cover your head. Cover your head. Cover your head because you're in a head button competition. Because what you're saying to yourself, and with this I finish, with what you are saying to yourself will determine whether you will win or lose the fight for the promise you heard. Okay, that's, that's a bit deep. Okay, and, I, and, and, and these guys are coming on, but t- tune in. Tune in. What you're saying to yourself in the secret moments determines whether you will win or lose the fight for the promise you heard God give you. It's a fight. There's a moment when you have to decide whose government will you come under. going to come under the government of Satan the rulership of Satan by giving heed to his thinking his imaginations or am I going to step and stand on what I know even though I don't feel like it Amen Amen, come on let's bow our heads let's bow our heads If you're here today and you're not right with God, if Satan has you all over the place, out of control, if you're stressed and, and you're faking it, you come in today with a fake smile, and yet you're at that place where you wanna you wanna throw in the towel, and you're running around pretending, the great pretender. Man, that's a tough place to be. And I'm inviting you. I, I believe Jesus is inviting you today to surrender your head. Surrender the government of your body, which is the head, to Jesus Christ, who is the king over everything. He's the king over your situation. What the king says goes. And he he has defeated Satan. And he's the only authority that can save you from yourself and from your thoughts and from those imaginations. You have no power over him to steal. He will want to steal, kill, and destroy. But God put all things under his feet, the feet of Jesus and give Jesus to be the head over all things. And so Timmy, Timmy's going to sing I Surrender All. And we're going to take a moment 
we're going to take a moment and, and I'm going to ask first of all those that don't know Jesus don't know this government of Jesus but you've decided today that you come along here today and you've heard, heard God speak to you and you know that you're, you're, you're it's out of control and you know that and, and I, you're going to put your trust under the government of Jesus Christ today maybe you're here and you've been saved four or five times and it's not worked for you or maybe you're a backslider maybe you're, you've, you've done you've been doing your own thing and, 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 and doing just whatever I feel like well look it's time to consider eternity put your mind on things above it's time to consider eternity and consider hell and choose who's need who needs who are you going to come under whose government are you going to come under and I'd love to pray for you but we're going to sing this worship piece first okay tell me I surrender I surrender all all to him my blessed Savior I surrender all oh yes I Just where you are. You know, in them war films, they, they, when the guy surrenders, he puts both hands on the post. I'm done. I'm finished. I can't do no more. I surrender. Come on. Is there somebody in here today that would do that? Lift up both them hands and we'll see it and we'll pray for you. I surrender. I surrender, God. Come on. Is there anybody? who you will serve is there one lift up that hand we'll see it we'll pray okay so now I believe that God wants to say to his people it's our time surrender to the government of the Lord Jesus over your life there's things there's secret sins there's fears there's worries there's things you've said that have come out of your mouth that are just in agreement with the enemy that you've brought yourself under his government you brought, you came into his agreement you and him's agreement I'll never love again Never love again. And you brought yourself into agreement, and Satan's agreeing with you. Okay, I'll make sure of that. And so we're going to sing this again. We're going to sing this again, but this time we've got. We, we know that God made the earth in, in six days, and then He rested on the seventh. Well, for six days, I, I'm going to ask you to stand, child of God. I'm going to ask you to stand and fight those things that have got you bound and that you're struggling with secret things, things that you don't want anybody to know about, that you can't say but devil has a hold on your life, you've got place on him, he's got place and, and God wants you to let them go God came to set the captive free and so we're gonna we're gonna sing that and if and with and will you come with us and lift up them hands and go right I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna surrender all Lord. okay I'm gonna surrender all so everybody come on child of God let's pray let's oh sing 